Just when you think you've seen absolutely every possible feature of a PC case, a vendor comes along and adds a whole new take on what a high-end chassis should include. Well, that's exactly what's happened to me today because Be Quiet has updated its Dark Base 900 series with this new Dark Base Pro 901, which includes QI, wireless fast charging, touch sensitive controls for fan speed and ARGB lighting, as well as a dual purpose attachment that reduces GPU sag and conceals cables. So could this be the most technologically advanced PC case we've ever seen? Let's find out. So the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 901 is a very big case. It is a full tower design and it supports up to EATX motherboards. If all you're interested in is small form factor stuff, then you're probably not going to like this. But it is available to purchase now, places like OCUK, and it's priced at just under £320. So it's not a cheap case, but you can see just by looking at this straight away, it's a high quality, high end, large, chassis designed for people that want to do elaborate water cooling or need a lot of storage space, a lot of space for fans and such like. So the main features of the Dark Base Pro 901 are interchangeable panels both at the top and the front. If you don't like this solid front design there is an included mesh front panel. You can also change the configuration of the top panel as well to switch between high airflow and low noise. Take a look at that in a bit when we take a closer look at the case. Also the fan stroke radiator brackets on the top and the front have integrated fan hubs so that should make the installation process a bit easier. You can connect all your fans up to to the fan hub on the front and on the top make cable management a little bit easier hopefully the case comes with three fans pre-installed so there's three 140 millimeter be quiet silent wings four pwm fans two in the front and one in the rear on the front io you have state-of-the-art touch sensitive controls for the rgb lighting and for the fan control again we'll look at these closely in a moment internally the dimensions are generous it supports up to eatx motherboards there's also an included vga holder which kind of doubles up as an anti-sag bracket and it also conceals cables another feature which we've seen in previous be quiet cases that we use such as the silent base 802 the motherboard tray is flexible so you can switch the orientation for inverted layouts and there's also so subtle RGB lighting effects on the front of the case and along the PSU shroud. Some accessories included with the case. This riser cable I believe is an optional extra that you can purchase separately. Uh, be quiet just sent this over in case I wanted to vertically mount during the build phase. You also get this uh, part box that's got several brackets and the GPU anti-sag bracket in there and another accessories box with different panels that are interchangeable. We'll take a closer look at these as well when we uh, take a look deeper at the case. So let's take a closer look at the case and take a look at some of the features. I'll start by uh, disassembling some of the side panels. So the tempered glass panel has two thumb screws and it just slides backwards and then it can be released. You can see it has a very mild tint to it. It's really not dark at all, no problems seeing through that and into the system. The uh, other side panel again, a couple of thumb screws and that just slides backwards with a bit of a pull. This is just a uh, standard steel side panel but it does have some sound dampening material on there as well. Also has a vent down this side that has some mesh on there. As well as the usual USB ports, power button and things like that on the front panel, you've also got this state-of-the-art touch sensitive controls for fan speed at this side and ARGB lighting at the other. You just have to really lightly touch these buttons. You can see the lighting glows up brighter when you touch one of the buttons. And this one's for the fan speed, so I think there's five different stages of fan speed. That's on its maximum, you might be able to hear the fans have ramped up. So this button is to increase and this button here reduces fan speed. You can reduce it back down. You can also synchronize the fan speed to motherboard control. There is a button at the side that you can press to synchronize that. Then on the other side are touch sensitive controls for the RGB lighting. There's two RGB lighting zones. 
one across the front panel and then one across the top of the power supply shroud. One of the buttons is to cycle through the different colours, so there's obviously a lot of preset colours and patterns from Be Quiet. So you press the right hand side button to cycle through the different colours and then the button on the left that cycles through the different patterns. Also again you can synchronise this to motherboard control, there's a little sync button at the side there and then you can set the RGB lighting by using motherboard software. In terms of connectivity on the front panel, so there's four USB 3.2 type A ports, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port, individual 3.5 millimeter jacks for audio and microphone. And on the top of the case here is a panel for QI wireless fast charging. So that's a 15 watt charger. Drop your phone on there or anything else that does wireless charging and that will fast charge the battery. The front panel that comes pre-installed to the case is a solid front panel but there are some large mesh vents down either side so you should have some airflow into the chassis with that solid panel installed. Down here there's a little flap at the bottom so the space there for a five and a quarter inch optical drive that's something we don't often see in cases but we do get quite a few comments on the videos asking where the cases are with five and a quarter inch drives. You will have to remove the hard drive bay down below the power supply shroud to fit a five and a quarter inch drive in there, but it is included. This panel can be completely removed and you can see there's some sound dampening material on that solid panel. You can also remove this, as I said previously. So there's some little tabs you just push in and this whole central part of this panel will come out. So you see that's the that's the solid panel and then with that removed you've got a big gap there and you can replace it with this so pop in place the mesh panel and then you can stick that all back on and you've got a high airflow mesh front for tons of front airflow the configuration of the top panel can also be changed so this central section is pushing either side and then it clips out. So here you do have a mesh panel pre-installed, but underneath that you have some solid panels. Again, there's one at the front there. You can see there's some more sound dampening material on that, and then a smaller panel towards the back. Again, that's got some sound dampening material. You can remove those and then just replace the mesh. So you've got high airflow from the front and the top of the case again. But as with the front panel that has the side vents, there's also some side vents on uh, the, the side of the top panel as well. So if you do leave those solid panels in, you will still get some airflow through those side vents. Obviously not as much as with this mesh panel installed. And then you can just, like I say, pop that back in, clip it in place like that. And you've got high airflow front and top, which no doubt will help with thermals of the case. As you can see inside, you got a huge amount of space. So the motherboard tray will support up to E-ATX motherboards. Obviously that also includes regular ATX, micro ATX and mini ATX. Can't imagine anybody installing micro ATX or mini ATX in here. Down this side of the motherboard tray, there's kind of a panel for concealing cables. And in terms of cutouts for cables along the top here you have a huge cutout and then the bottom there's a nice kind of slot gap there to get all your cables through down this side of the motherboard tray it's covered with these kind of plastic panels these are just really trim panels to block up these holes so the holes here you can actually remove some of the uh, hard drive caddies from underneath the power supply shroud and pop them in there and you can stack them up and install three and a half inch and two and a half inch drives all down the side there. You only get two of those cages included with the case, but you can buy them extra if you want to populate the whole side of here with storage drives. Obviously that is going to reduce GPU length, but if storage is priority, there's an absolute stack of storage space inside this case.
In terms of fans included, so as I said previously, there's two Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 PWM fans at the front, 140mm versions, and then just a single 140mm Silent Wings 4 at the back of the case here. There's obviously plenty of scope for adding more fans. So at the front, you can add up to three 120 or 340 millimeter fans or up to 420 millimeter radiators that also includes 360s 280s 240s or a 120 at the top of the case again you can fit either 320 mil or 340 millimeter fans or up to a 360 millimeter radiator again 360 280 240 or 120 can be installed in there and at the back of the case it's just a single 140 or 120 millimeter fan or a 140 or 120 radiator. Maximum CPU cooler height is 190 millimeters tall. I can't think of any big air coolers that shouldn't fit inside this case. Down the back of the case, there's eight PCIe slot cutouts and the maximum GPU length. So without anything installed down the front here, so no drive bays or anything installed here, you can fit graphics cards up to 495 millimeters long. So again, I can't think of a graphics card on the market that won't fit inside this case. If you do add hard drive cages here, that will reduce the maximum graphics card length to 350 millimeters, which is still you know, enough space for the majority of cards on the market. There's still a lot more modularity to this case. So if you want, you can remove all this motherboard tray, power supply shroud, everything, flip it the other way around. So everything's installed from the opposite side and you've got an inverted layout. Also, there's things like the power supply shroud front here. So if you just press down on that, this comes out. That allows you better access in here for adding cables to the power supply. On top of the power supply shroud, there's another plastic cover here. You can remove that remove this drive bay and improve airflow. So if you've got three fans in the front, one will probably be, the majority of it will be down below the power supply shroud. So you can add this vented panel in there, just pop that in place, and then that will add some more ventilation from that bottom fan and it'll direct it up into the main compartment up here. So the top radiator stroke fan bracket is also removable, there's just four thumb screws so you loosen those off and the whole bracket comes out you can then put this on your desk or bench install your fans and your radiator to it and then screw it back into the case as i said there is a pwm fan hub integrated into this one and into the front radiator bracket so say you've got three 120 or 340 mil fans on here you just connect them up to there and then this contact contacts with a little circuit board on top of the case and the wiring then runs down you can connect that to the motherboard for synchronization to the motherboard or controlled by the controls on the front of the case there's a little panel on the back at the side of the pcie slots you just remove several screws from here this panel removes and also so does the, uh, the main PCIe slots. You can switch that round and pop it that way around. Put the screws back in and then you've got a full set of eight PCIe slots to vertically mount graphics cards. Also down at the bottom is another removable bracket for the power supply for thumb screws that hold this in position. Remove that, screw that to your power supply, put the power supply in from the back and then tighten that up with the thumb screws. Flip the case round. The other way, you can see the right hand side. Again, there's quite a lot going on at this side of the case as well. There's various channels here for cable management. There's like a central channel down there with some Velcro straps to strap all your cables to. You've got a couple of 2.5 inch SSD mounts here. These again, just held in place with captive thumb screws. Lift those off, pop your drive in there and then just hook it back in place. Screw it in position. So there's a couple of SSD mounts there. At the bottom of the case, underneath the power supply shroud, there's a 3.5 inch drive bay here. It has two removable drive cages. So these are just held in place with thumb screws. Just loosen off the thumb screw and then those slide out. They have these quick release fittings. So you just open those up, slide your drive in both sides, and then you just clip those back into your drive and it's locked in place. No screws needed whatsoever. You can then use them in these slots here. So just slide them through the slots 
and uh, lock them in place with the thumb screw and you can see five slots here two more down there cut so in total you could fit seven 3.5 inch drives you do only get two of these included with the case but you can buy them separately so you can fit a total of seven 3.5 inch drives five down here if you buy the optional extra drive cages and two in the uh, 3.5 inch carry down here maximum amount of 2.5 inch drives you can install so from the factory as it is you can install six so two here and then you can actually fit four 2.5 inch drives in these two cages underneath the power supply shroud there if you were to buy the extra drive cages, you can install a total of 16 2.5 inch drives. This hard drive cage also comes out completely. So there's a few screws to remove. And there it is. It's actually just a, just like a metal bracket there. So you can remove that completely if you don't want to install any 3.5 inch drives there. That also allows for another fan mount down here. So you could potentially install another 120 or 140 fan down there. Obviously you'd need that vented panel in place really for that to be effective. Maximum power supply clearance. Be Quiet doesn't put a figure on this actually because you can see there is tons of space down there and I guess any power supply on the market, any ATX power supply will fit in there. No problem whatsoever. So this bracket that holds the uh, drive cages this as well can be removed. So take out a couple of screws from here. Just remove a couple of screws. And then that just kind of pivots and comes out. So that's the mount for the uh, hard drive brackets and you can replace it with this one instead. So just pop that in place. And then with that bracket, installed you've got another potential place for another three fans or another radiator mounting position but if you don't want to install anything in there you've also got this plastic panel and this clips in place at the bottom and at the top like that and it just conceals that whole area inside this part box that comes with the case you get several metal brackets that are not really that interesting you also get a box with some velcro ties and some uh, mounts and things in there and you get uh, some packs with screws in which are not really that interesting what does interest me though is this so this is the vga support bracket and uh, it doubles up as like an anti-sag thing for your graphics card as well as a cable concealing device so your cables will run down the inside of there and underneath this and then through the bottom slot in the motherboard and uh, on the bottom of here there's a couple of magnets you can just slot it in place like so obviously over where the cables attached to your graphics card and then just adjust it to wherever it's level it's difficult to see here and then that's basically it so it's a gpu anti-sag bracket and it also conceals your cables i'm not sure whether that was better or worse but when we build the system for this review i'll be using that giving that a try out and see how it goes i'm not sure how you'd go on with the uh, nvidia 12 volt high power adapter thing especially if it's got four connectors on whether you'll be able to conceal it all in here or not with a uh, card that uses regular pcie cables it should look pretty good so i'm interested to see how that works during the build phase i think i've covered most of the features there's so much to talk about with this case. There's probably something I've missed. Um, if I have missed something though, don't forget you can give me a uh, question, send me a question in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer it. But I think I've covered the main points of the case. The only thing really is to take a look at the, uh, the floor of the case. Not a lot going on except for these big metal feet. These raise the case up by about 25, 30 millimeters, maybe a little bit more, and covering all the bottom of the case. There is a dust filter that pulls out from the front. You just have to remove the front panel to get to that. And then that pulls out completely. And then you can see the bottom of the case is really open and vented. Large area for a vent on the power supply shroud here. And there's also, you can see, a fan mount there beneath the hard drive bays. So I think that's everything covered. Let's get on to the build. So the build's going to be a high-end specification and I'm going to try and install plenty of fans 
in the case because there's lots of room for them. I've got a load of these Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 high speed PWM fans. I'm going to try and fit as many of those into the system as possible. CPU is an Intel Core i9-13900K. Motherboard is this Z790 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. For the graphics I was thinking about using this RTX 4090 but I want to try and install dual radiators. I want to see how easy it is to install two 360mm radiators inside the case. So instead I'm going to be using this Sapphire 6950 XT Toxic because that is a hybrid cooling card and it has a 360mm radiator attached to it. Memory, I'm going to be using the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. This is a 32GB kit to 16GB DIMMs and it's DDR5 6000 mega transfers per second. Storage is the Patriot Viper VP4300. This is a 2TB PCIe Gen 4 M.2 NVMe drive. CPU cooler is the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 360. I might swap the fans from that for some of the Silent Wings 4 fans or I might run push-pull configuration. Power supply is a new one from Be Quiet. So this is the brand new Straight Power 12. This is a PCIe 580X3 power supply, 850 watt. 80 plus platinum rated that's the power supply i'll be using that's pretty much it so let's see what we can do with this be quiet dark base pro 901 and uh, see how the build turns out
So the build's finished. For the most part, it was a really enjoyable case to build a system with plenty of space to get in, loads of access in where you need it, from the top, from the front, and even from the side. Removable fan brackets, as always, are very handy to have. You can take the brackets out, build everything up on the bench, and then put it back in to the case. These in particular, with the integrated fan hubs, really useful feature that. Big graphics cards will fit in here, no problems. Custom water cool in this case looks ideal for building a custom loop with multiple radiators. I did have one slight problem during the build, and that was installing this side radiator. So the side mount says it accepts 360 millimeter radiators, which it does, because you can see it is installed. 
but I did run up against a bit of a problem. So when I tried to install the radiator, I noticed that the screw holes on the bracket didn't quite line up. So I disassembled it a little bit and had a look why. There's actually a second set of screw holes and I'm not sure if they are intended for the bracket to be moved up, but you can actually move the fan stroke radiator side bracket up a little onto the second set of screw holes and everything lines up and the radiator can be installed in that position. But when you move it up to those other screw holes, it actually knocks the wireless charging pad out of position and moves it out of line and it sticks up on top of the case. So I'm not sure if those extra screw holes are intended for you to move that bracket up, but it does work. But to do it, and for you to be successful and it not to interfere with that charging pad, you have to do a small modification to the bracket and chop a little bit off the top corner. And also the locating tabs down the side or the opposite side to the screw holes, they don't line up when you move it up to those second set of screw holes. So I'm not sure whether that is an issue or just whether this specific radiator wasn't 100% compatible with the bracket, but seems odd that you have to mess about like that and I had to do a bit of a modification to get the radiator in but as you can see it is fitted and it does work really well. The GPU bracket as well I wondered how that would look I think it looks pretty good actually. Quite surprised with this it does a good job of reducing the sag in the GPU although this graphics card doesn't suffer too much from that problem but it holds it up nicely and it conceals the cables. I think it does a really nice job in a way you get away without needing to buy some custom cables or make some custom cables that look nice because they're completely hidden and I think it looks good I do like the look of that I think it is a really good design as you can see I installed the CPU radiator at the top of the case with some be quiet silent wings for PWM high speed fans so they're acting as exhaust the graphics card radiator I installed as I say on this side panel I'm using silent wings for pro fans on that so 320 mil fans i added another silent wings for 140 mil fan to the front of the case and i stuck with the default silent wings for 140 mil pwm fan at the back the front fans and the back one are connected up to the fan hub i actually swapped these three fans on the cpu cooler and removed them from that fan hub because it was difficult to control the CPU fans separately to the other case fans. I didn't really want them all ramping up on the CPU temperature. I prefer to keep the case fans at a constant uh, RPM. So they're connected to the CPU header. The graphics card fans are connected to another fan header on the motherboard. And I was able to control those dependent on the GPU temperature. Stress testing with the case in its default configuration with all side panels installed using the mesh front, both CPU and GPU temperature are right where we would expect from a good high airflow setup. Removing the tempered glass side panel didn't have an adverse effect on either the CPU or GPU temperature. Swapping out the mesh front for the solid front increased system temperature by a couple of degrees C, but nothing to worry about. However, installing the solid top panel added more heat to the CPU. CPU. Noise levels were pretty consistent when swapping case configurations. The only noticeable drop in noise came when both the solid front and top panels were installed. So in this scenario you trade off the noise for a slightly higher CPU temperature. If you use the system in an environment where low noise is critical this would be the configuration to choose. But if temperature is more important then run the case with full mesh configuration. So other than, so other than that minor issue I came across with that side mounting GPU radiator. I really enjoyed using this case. I enjoy building the system. It's great for high-end hardware support. Water cooling enthusiasts building custom loops should love this case. It should be absolutely brilliant for multiple big radiator setups. The quality of everything is second to none. Be quite, it's done a great job with the build quality. We say this with a lot of cases, but in this one, just looking at the case initially, you can see it is a high quality case. It's really well put together. The modularity of it means that the possibilities are almost endless with what you can do to this. You can invert the layout, install fans where you want. There's so many options for storage and then you get all the extras. So the GPU mount, the fact that you can rotate the rear PCIe slots to do vertical mounting. 
it really is a great case. And then those other features such as the QI wireless charger, that for me is a brilliant thing to add to a case. I often find myself during the day needing to charge my phone. It's got wireless charging, so why not have that being able to you know, integrate it into a case? Pop your phone on top of there and it just starts charging. I think that is a really, really good feature to have. Those touch sensitive buttons on the front just give it that extra high quality feel. I love how you touch that button and the panel all illuminates. It's just a really, really high quality. The downside to that obviously is the price. It is a very expensive at around £320. The budget for your whole system needs to be big. If you're buying this on a limited budget, then you're going to have to compromise on other parts in the system. But as I said, it's high quality. It looks good. There's so many features, so many possibilities with this case. Loads of space for fans, five and a quarter inch bays, loads of storage space. And the only problem I've got with it is having to mess around with that side radiator mount. Other than that, just the price may be a problem. But if you have the money, then this is the case to go for. There's no other case where you get these features, such as this wireless charging. The high quality finish is second to none. Things like this GPU mount and all the features and possibilities with this case are really superb. So let us know what you think of the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 901 in the comment section. Is this something you're interested in? Would you be uh, spending £320 on a case for your next build? If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you've not already done so. If you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to the store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.